This is continuing with the uh, cleaning and uh, a little bit of maybe restoring, polishing the larger top box, snap on top box. And what you're looking at is a very thin, half inch deep, I believe it is what that means. Um, there you go. There's a, there's the uh, measurements. And what that's going to be for is cleaning some of these small flat parts that are uh, like the sliders and stuff like that. Among other things, you can use it for a lot of different things. So you saw what that was. See this you know, for making little flat cakes like that kind of thing. Um, because ours won't be quite that sweet, but it'll be just as beautiful. With, how's that sound? So you take one. What I'm going to do? I'm going to take one. I'm saving the other for something else. And add some uh, either simple green or in this case I happen to have this jug handy here of purple power it's the same idea same basic idea as simple green it's <laughs> with simple green was successful so these guys said oh yeah well we're gonna do the same exact thing but uh, it's purple now that's our deal whoa Pour gentle because since it's so flat, it'll bounce out as you can just see it just did. Um, and don't fill it all the way up because when you put the parts in, they're going to take some volume. So I would pour it at least maybe a third, maybe half, depending on how much stuff you have and how big the things are. So this is the perfect kind of thing. Not too big, doesn't take up too much room. Some people get their bucket and they fill it all the way halfway up and then they try to put these tiny little wrenches or some sockets or something and it just floats to the bottom. You can't even see what the hell's going on. I, I like having these flatter ones that uh, you can see what's happening kind of thing. Try not to get it on you because if it burns this old grease, if it melts this old dried up grease that's rock hard or, or whatever the issue is, it's, how do you think it's going to do on your nice, fresh, tender, young flesh? You know, it's probably not going to have a hard time with that either. As a matter of fact, it'll cut through that easier. You just want to cover it. What really matters is that it uh, is just um, going to get clean and going to get covered up. So I like the idea of they all lay down. I can see what's there. Um, maybe took a little, I'll come back with a little brush and see if it's softened up or not. You can see that white stuff. I'm not sure what it is. But it's uh, hard. So when you're trying to pull these drawers open, they really stick shut. That's what I like about these old boxes. Even though they get dirty, they get uh, the old grease is dry, they get all kinds of shavings and crap in it, they still fucking work. This is such simple, basic technology that it's still, it's almost like it can't fail unless literally there's a rock in the way. Or, or I've seen ones where in the track with all the grease, there was actually a... Um, a drill bit, a, tiny, a thin, small drill bit, wedged up in there in the track. The thing still sort of worked. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, I like that kind of stuff where it's, it's, you know, trying to do its best for you. I got the other ones here. I'm just going to lay them in as well. And now I can just let this thing kind of soak for a little while. It doesn't have to be overnight, it doesn't have to be hours. Um, especially when it's concentrated like this, if you're not doing a 50-50 or whatever mixture of water in this, then it's fairly strong. Let that sit for a while and I'm gonna come back with rubber gloves in maybe half an hour or something and I'll scrub them clean. That's all the tracks out of the box and the carcass of the toolbox. The next thing, maybe another day, you can see how much dust is in there. The next, is the, this is the tool for getting it out by the way, which works great. The next thing is probably take this outside and scrub down these tracks as best as I can and um, clean all this up in general. This looks like old glue, I don't know what that is, but something in there. It might come out, might not. We'll see. Uh, what I like about this is that it's got two stickers on the outside, which I don't like. I'd like to get rid of those, but it's got a bunch inside, which I like. I'll keep those. Um, 
something to look forward to. We'll see how that goes. Thinking about getting a new one of these. I don't know if Snap-on would give me those if they're still available. We'll see. I'm, I might call them someday in the future here, near future. So, anyways, that's where we're at so far. So I'll just turn the far end and kind of scrub it down. You can see all that sludge and oil, old oil coming out of there, which is of course what you want. Um, it melts it pretty good, so it doesn't take a lot of extra effort to knock off just the, the bigger pieces kind of thing, which is nice. So I'm just going to use this coarser brush to do that, and then I'm going to go back with a finer, finer brush. So kind of like encourage it, and then uh, properly clean it up. But yeah, I hope, hope that's clear what's happening there. If you're looking in there, you can see it's the channel's clean. It's just melted all the old grease and oil. It might be a good idea, by the way, to wear some eye protection because all these little bristles tend to uh, fling you know this uh, super corrosive soap all over the place so it's not only getting on your hands and your clothes or your surrounding area but it could also fling it into your face if you're standing too close to it trying to see what you're doing you know so you probably don't want this stuff in your eye. I mean, you flush it out with water, of course, and all that, whatever the first aid suggestions are, good idea. But um, better would be just to not have it in your eye in the first place. So that's all the rails now. I'm going to get a quick hosing off. I'll stop here for now. This is too dark and complicated. And I'll do the rest of tomorrow. I'll rinse these off now, but I'll do the, the box tomorrow in the daytime. So the first thing I do is take a dry paintbrush. And sweep out some of this dust on the inside. Just sort of like loosening and organizing the dirt so that when you tip it over and it comes out. Some stuff is kind of like stuck in the corner, but when you just brush it with a dry paintbrush and breaks it up enough, you can get it out. It comes loose. By the way, the lid and things like that, the sides, the back, inside the bottom. So there's a lot of dirt dust. Now is the time to do it before you get water or soap in here. Plus, it gives you a better way of assessing what exactly do I need to do. You might brush all this dirt off, and you're thinking, "Oh, I need to do a lot of work. It's filthy." By the time you get done brushing the dirt off, it turns out it's in that better condition than you thought. Type of thing. It was mostly protected by the dirt. That's actually, you know, the old joke: protecting it with dirt. Sometimes it's true. Now up here, that's the whole different story. That's dried grease. That's that's gonna be different. Same thing. So I did the inside there. Now we do the outside brush it away basically but if it's been sitting in a garage or closet or whatever forever for years you know it's still dis it's still dusty it's still dirty and that's kind of how this was
little ledges like this, you know, see? A bunch of dirt just sitting there, loose. Brush it up. Let's put it away. Alright, so now it's time to get it wet. Get that grease out of there. And uh, dump out that stuff. And also part of the box. Now when we brush this out, everything can escape. You don't have to pick it up, you just brush it out. The thing about Simple Green is if you uh, put it in raw like I'm going to, you don't you don't dilute it in another bucket of water or whatever. It will uh, it's very it's very strong and it's gonna dissolve the paint. So you, you get it on there and then you get it off, you don't fuck around. So we just sprayed it. Now we're gonna scrub the rail. Maybe a little bit of the surface of the paint that's got dirty, especially the front, because it's been, uh, you know, the front and the back wall too sometimes. So this side is going to be, you know, when I when I turn it around and I'm going to spray this down, this will be down. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm more worried about what I just sprayed and everything that's basically facing down here. So like. I'm more worried about this. Here. Can you see that? This bottom edge. That's what I want to get. While well, it's in this position. I want to get everything eventually. So what I like to do is give it a quick spray. Wipe wipe down what I'm gonna wipe down. I mean scrub it like I'm doing right now. And maybe spray it one more time. Another quick wipe down. Scrub. Um, and hopefully that's enough. To clear it. And then I uh, hose it down. the first pass let's do it again especially on the more stubborn parts now where you can see it didn't let go that kind of thing also if you smear it around with a sponge or something else um, if you don't smear it around let's say you just spray it on the on the back or the whatever surface and you let it run, it'll eventually, it'll start to eat off the oxidized paint is what really it starts to do. And then you'll end up with these clean streaks, basically, where you see the run. Uh, another way to, to solve that is to get it the, the surface slightly wet. If you moisten it so that there's a layer of water, now the simple green doesn't just run off in streams. It kind of, you know, spreads out as it mixes with the water, which both dilutes it and spreads out the... Uh, area of contact so it ends up being evenly faded instead of ugly streaks like this might have in the back if I don't do that for example so you gotta be mindful of that if you care uh, if you just want to knock off the dirt and get to work you know you just do it as fast as you can that's one thing I'm not doing this because I'm trying to save time I'm trying to clean it up make it nice again 
a lot of dried crap here in the front. Now I'm going to wash it off. If I just turn it around and do the other side, that means this side is still going to be soaking in green, in simple green, which I think is too strong. So I want to get it off, or at least dilute it, and then I'll turn it around and do the do these rails there. So you see the other way. a lot better than it was especially now that there's uh, a coating of water like I said that makes a big difference to mitigate ruining the paint clean up this bottom edge here this this extra chunk that didn't want to move now it's moving getting off of there Uh, basically, once you start getting into the soap, the solvents, the soaps, the you know simple green or whatever it is, uh, you want to keep it moving. Is, is my my advice because that stuff is powerful. If you're lazy like me and you want to just get it done, you, you want to keep it moving because that stuff's powerful and it'll burn up the paint too, or other things that you might not want to destroy. Uh, with you know you're not want to get rid of. So you can't just fuck around it's letting it sit there and all that now if you want to take your time and do it the slower way probably more uh thorough eventually way the slower is usually better in general um because if things start to go wrong you don't fuck up as fast <laughs> basically is, is how things how it is my uh, understanding faster you go and then if things go sideways well now you're at way over you know it gets bad real quick too so that's not good um, so in this case you know keep it moving if I'm trying to get it done today But it's a lot better, and it's come to the point where I'm thinking that might be good enough. For, you know, it's the inside of the box. It's not like <laughs> that many people are going to see that or care about that. Actually, I'm not sure if anyone would see that because that's going to be behind the track too. Now I think about. But anyway, I don't know what's there, but I also know I cleaned it up. You know, fairly decent for a quick job, as quick as possible on something this size. So yeah, they're cool cool old boxes if you like that sort of thing, like me, but it can be quite a bit of extra work when you got all these little parts and shapes you contend with. I want to make sure that gets, you know, I don't know what that is, it might be old glue, it won't come out, I have no idea. For some reason these two side things have that kind of look. Gloomy, oily was either spilled, put in there, and then left in there. Like they kept their epoxies in there. I have no idea. Or something oily parts were always kept in there. Another thing about the brush, but little weird parts like around the hinge and stuff like that, the corners. The same parts can squeeze into those little crevices that this won't be able to. So it, it knocked off a lot of that old or, um, oil. There's still some weird things that look like they're stuck in there, but 
This is a piece of paint that tipped off, so that's what will happen too. You'll lose loose pieces of paint that want to come off or they're you know, falling off the way. But you can't be afraid of that if you do this. So again, since I'm here, I might as well. You can see at the bottom edge of the back looks like a little bit of pork. Uh, also, it's kind of fun when you're doing this in the bottom or the back corner or something. You know, I'm looking for, um, you know, a label that might be someone's name or whatever, a date, receipts, that kind of stuff is fun. Sometimes you find it. When you take all the drawers out, behind all the drawers, there's, you know, you finally find the original tool drawer removal tool comes with. We've been lost for 50 years. And, um, stuff like that. You can see the structure here, so it's basically a steel panel, but it's got this I-beam, or this sort of U-joint, the U-U uh, channel. Looks like they weld it to the bottom for structure. So they put some effort into it. You know, these side, front, like all the walls are double, or at least maybe triple. This one looks like the seal is here. So that's why these things are so heavy and tough. in quite good condition. I really got lucky with this setup. Sometimes you get Sometimes you buy a bunch of junk and it's a big house to clean and other times you get lucky. Although, I don't mind restoring a little bit, but of course, you know, worth it to save money. If you get something that's too perfect, then they want a lot more money for it because they're basically saving you all this time. You can decide how much your time is worth when you're doing something like that. If you think you're worth, let's pretend, $20, $25 an hour, that's how much you think it's worth to spend on these things. Or, or you know, that, that's what it's costing you, let's say. Is that's how much you feel like I would be wanting to get paid.
I think this is a good place to stop for now. That was one of the bigger jobs too, that's why I was <laughs> kind of putting it off. But I finally got it done. So. Alright. We'll see, uh, see you in the next video. Oh, if, you, if you like this, by the way, leave a comment, uh, leave a thumbs up so that I know this, all this work is being appreciated, not just for me, obviously the machine, the toolbox, but making the video to show you guys how, what I'm doing, so uh, let me know. Okay, talk to you later, bye. So it's been the next day. There's the uh, rails. Um, and so here's how it came out now, nice and toasty. You can see this originally very black section. It's still got some crap in there. This looks like it's old epoxy or something. Almost feels plasticky. But there's still dirt, you know, in the corners. I didn't get everything 100% scrubbed clean but I feel like it's gonna get covered with a mat and it, uh, at least it's mostly you know cleaned up it's, it's like a lot cleaner than it was for sure next would be like I'm gonna work on some of the corrosion and cleaning these up I want to see if I can get the lock replaced because I don't have the key I want to get a new a new key for that if I can can here's the inside of here uh, as you can see so these are a lot better no no big chunks of dried whatever um, and in general just cleaner so I'm gonna next is you know take this back inside now I don't want to leave it outside all day I mean you know three or four days in a row and I'll try to um, start with the a buffing of the drawers, buffing of the of the box here, this carcass, and uh, polishing, and then assembling, and that'll be done for that. So I just wanted to give a quick uh, update here. Two days later, because before I just left it to dry, there was nothing else to do. So now it's dry. <laughs> saw my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I almost had an accident myself. <laughs>